In this video, I'm going to explain how we can implement JWT authentication into your Node.js application. In the previous video, we covered what JSON Web Tokens are. If you are not familiar with JSON Web Tokens or want a refresher, please make sure you watch the previous video where I explain what JSON Web Tokens are. First off, we are going to set up a server. For the server, I will use Koa.js. If you use Express instead of Koa, you should be totally fine. The setup is pretty similar since Koa is just a lightweight version of Express, but be aware to install the right dependencies if you use Express. First, we need to create a new folder for our project. I call this JWT authentication. Now head into that directory. In here, we need to initialize a package.json file by running yarn init. Press enter to everything. Now we can install all the needed dependencies for our server. Of course, we need Koa. Now we need Koa router. We need this package to create routes to handle our authentication. Then we need Koa body parser to send data in our body. And then, of course, we need JSON web token for signing and verifying a token. Press enter to install it. What I'm going to do next is install some dev dependencies. First, I'm going to install Notemon. I use Notemon so we don't have to restart our server every time we make a tiny change to our application. Then I'm also going to install .env so we can create variables for our environment. Save it as a dev dependency. Once we have all the needed dependencies installed, we can now set up our actual server with Koa. When you open your code editor, we can now create a new file called index.js. What we can do next is head to package.json and we can add a script to run our server with Notemon. We can now close our package.json file because we are not going to need it anymore. What we can do now is start our server by running yarn dev. And if we now, for example, add a console log with test, we can now see that Notemon is running perfectly. Let's now import all the dependencies that we just installed. Now that we imported all the packages that we need, we can now create a new instance of Koa. And we can make a new instance for the router. We can now apply our middleware. And because we are using .env, I'm going to create a new file called .env. In here, I'm going to specify the port. I'm going to run the server on port 4000. In here I add a new variable with port. What we can do now is run the server on port 4000 by typing app.listen port. And we can do a console log so we know that the server is running. And if we go to our terminal now, we can see server is running at HTTP localhost 4000. Let me quickly create a test route. And if we now head to this localhost 4000, we can now see that our route is working. We now have our server set up. When you set up your server with Express, it would look something like this. And as you can see, it looks pretty similar to each other. For a functional application, you would require two different routes, one for registering new users and one for allowing users to sign in. As this video is about JWT authentication, we will not be setting up a database. Instead, we will use an array containing fake data for the users. Let's create this array. As you can see, I added two fake users. Each user has a ID, a name, an email, and a password. We can now move on and creating the route for the user to sign in. This is a post request. So we do router.post. We are going to grab the email and the password from the body. What we can do now with the email and password specified in the body, we can check in the users array if the user actual exists. And in the users array, we can find for a user that has the user.email equal to email and the user.password equal to the given password. We would need to do something like, if the user doesn't exist, throw an error. And if the user does exist, we add the user to the body. 
So I'm using Postman to send our actual requests. This software you can download for free. In here you can create a new collection, add a new request. This is going to be a post request. HTTP localhost 4000 slash login. Now we need to add the email and the password to the body. Choose form URL encoded from here. Add the email and the password. We created two fake users. We are going to use the John Doe from here. Paste it in. Use the given password. Paste it in. And if we would now send a request, if the user actually exists, it will return the user. If it doesn't, it will give an error. So if we send this request, this will be valid, so the user will be returned. As you can see, it did. And if we, for example, add a wrong password, we will now get a message with invalid credentials. So what we can do now, when the user signs in and it's valid, we can now create a token. We can sign this token with the JWT package. The first argument is the payload. This is typically the subject. Since this video is about user authentication, we are going to add the user ID to the subject. Now we need to specify a secret. You can use different types of algorithms for this, but I'm just going to use a string. You never want to hard code your secret in here because, for example, when you upload your code to GitHub and someone else has access to your GitHub, he can basically create his own tokens with your signed secret. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the .n file and create a new variable with JWT secret. And in here you can specify your own secret. I'm just going to name this random secret. So in here we can now add the secret that we just created. The next arguments are the JWT options. Most of the time people add the expiry date of the token here. So I'm going to do that as well. As you can see here, it says expressed in seconds or a string describing a time span. Usually you want a token to be short lived. For example, when you create a token that lives for seven days and the user get access to your access token, he can basically send requests on your behalf for seven days long. So if you have a small lift token, for example, for five minutes and someone get access to your token for five minutes, he can only access your resources for five minutes. On the other hand, <laughs> you should never share your token with someone else. Someone should not even get access to your token. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to use one hour. Now you want to save your token in a safe place. I'm going to save it in a HTTP only cookie. I do this by running ctx cookies.set. Now we have to specify the name of the token. This is going to be the name of your cookie. I name this just token. Then add the actual token that we just signed. And in here you can give cookie options. As I said, we need a HTTP only cookie. So I use the HTTP only flag and set it to true. In a real application, you should set secure to true. So you make sure your cookie is only sent through HTTPS only connections. You should definitely check out how to set your tokens safe because this is very important because you don't want anyone else to get access to your token. I'm going to delete the secure because I'm not running my server on HTTPS. Now that our cookie has been set when we sign in, we can now add to the body something like user has been successfully logged in. We go back to Postman. We change the credentials here because the password before was wrong. We send it and we can now see the user has been successfully logged in. And if we go to our cookies, a cookie has been created. You can see the token here. What you can do is copy this token and if you watched my previous video, you know you can go to jwt.io and you can copy the token here that we just created and then we can decode it and see what's in the token. You can see the subject is here. That's the user his ID. We can see when the token has been created and we can see when the token expires. Make sure you never put sensitive data in this token because basically everyone that has access to your access token can basically decode it and see what information is in your token. Now we will create the middleware so we can authenticate the user on each route. We can grab the token from the cookie. We will create a try and catch here. I will soon explain why we need this try and catch. We can now verify the token with the JWT package. We can grab the sub from the token. So do JWT.verify. The first argument is the token. The second argument is the secret. 
This has to be the same secret as the secret that you signed your token with. So now we can find if there is a user in the users array with the ID that is equal to the sub. So now we can set the state of the user to the user. And here is where the catch comes in handy because, so let's say the token can be verified because the token hasn't been set or the token secret is invalid or the token has been expired. It will return an error and it will move on to the catch. And in here we can set the state of the user to null. This way we know if a user is logged in. Now we can do await next and it will move on with the route. So now our server knows that we are logged in, but let's say the client wants to know if the user is logged in, we can now create a route for that. We simply return a body with user and in here we specify the state of the user. So basically what it does now, when we try to hit this route, it first runs this middleware so it checks if the token is available in the cookie, then it will verify it. It will grab the ID from the user, then it will find in the user array if the user exists. If it is, it will set the state of the user to the user. If it doesn't, it will set the state to null. And then we just basically return the state of the user. So if we now go back to Postman, we save this route, we create a new request. This is the request that we just made in our code editor. We save this and if we now log in we can see user has been successfully logged in if we go to the get request here we can now see the user so let's say I'm going to log in with the Jane account and we log in we can see user has been successfully logged in and if we go back to the get request we can now see Jane has been logged in and if we remove our token and we send this request, we will now see the user is null. So this means the user isn't logged in. Imagine if we had a database with books and the user wants to see a list of the books, but it's only available when the user has signed in. We can create a middleware to authorize the user. We can check if the user state isn't set and we can throw an error with. And then we can do Await next. If the user is authorized, it will move on with the route. So if we go back to our index.js, in here we have to import the authorize middleware. And if we scroll down to our books route, we can now add authorize here. And what this will do, it will run this function first and see if the user is authorized. So if we now go to Postman, and we create a new request with books. If we now send, we can see unauthorized and when we log in with the user and we go back to books and we send it now, we can now see the books. This way you can basically protect your routes. We have now implemented JWT authentication into our Node.js application. If you want to know how to set this up with something like a front-end framework like React or Next.js or Svelte, please let me know in the comments down below. For now, I want to thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful day.